The concept of what could have been in storytelling is nothing new. What if Romeo had waited a minute before killing himself? What if Brett and Scarlet's child hadn't died and gone with the wind? What if Harry and Lloyd had gotten on the bus at the end? What if Dopey could talk? Frankly, the possibilities are endless. And sometimes, that in and of itself can be a problem. Because as history class has more than proven, you can go over any event in the entirety of human history a million times over, but that won't change the fact that things did play out the way they did. What if Genghis Khan hadn't died? Well, he did. What if Napoleon hadn't invaded Russia? Well, he did. What if the Germans had won World War II? Well, they didn't. What if Pintos didn't explode? Well, they do. Now what's my point with all of this? That complex theories on what would have happened if movie characters had done things differently, or if different events had played out, are nice, but can be taken a little overboard. And the other problem is, sometimes people also posit theories that sound good, but completely miss the point of what a given story was meant to be. And today, I'd like to go over this in regards to the three main characters' roles in Megamind, and specifically, look at a quote I've seen that argues how the movie could have been quote-unquote better. And there will be spoilers ahead, so in case you don't want another movie ruined, you should click off the video now. Okay, so as most of you already know, the basic plot of Megamind is that our main character is a supervillain that is always trying to defeat the beloved hero Metro Man. But after actually doing so, Megamind quickly finds himself bored with his life because his feud with Metro Man was all about the challenge and not trying to obtain actual victory. So in order to feel he has a purpose again, he infuses an unassuming cameraman with Metro Man's powers in order to have a new hero to fight. But as all of this is happening, he starts dating the woman who used to act as his damsel in distress while in disguise, and starts to find himself rethinking his thankless role as being the bad guy. And then, well... I'm pretty sure you all already know how it ends up going. So, the point here is, Megamind is meant to be a deconstructive parody of the superhero genre. Our main character is a villain who isn't actually evil, and instead only plays the role of a bad guy. The damsel in distress is not only not scared of him in the least, but also actually becomes his love interest by the time it's over. And one hero turns out to be a bit of a jerk who opted to retire in, shall we say, a rather unorthodox fashion, while the other ends up becoming a real villain through and through after having his temper unleashed, being rejected, and letting his virtually limitless powers go to his head. And you have to admit, for most people expecting a traditional superhero movie, that's about as turned on its head as it can get, right? Well, some people don't think so. Because as I brought up before, I once read a quote from somebody that argued how Megamind could have been an even more effective deconstruction of the superhero genre if it had just done one thing differently. But before I go any further, let me read you the quote first. As Megamind talks to Minion about whom they should make into a hero, and how this hero should be someone of noble heart and mind who puts the welfare of others above their own, he is interrupted by his cell phone ringing. It's Roxanne. She is right outside, because she tracked him down to stop him. If he had been given more than a few minutes to dwell on the thought, he almost certainly would have chosen her. 
and many have pointed out that this would have been part of a great deconstruction of the genre by having the damsel become the hero, the villain becomes the damsel, and the hero becomes the villain, as you could still have Hal become the villain later on. Instead, it goes for a more cliché, the villain becomes the hero story. Okay, now let me just start out by saying, the plot posited here isn't actually a bad one. Seeing the character who's supposed to be the hero become the villain, the villain becoming the damsel in distress, and the damsel in distress becoming the hero, is most certainly a different idea that could have worked. In fact, in earlier drafts of Megamind, it actually was Roxanne who was supposed to get infused with Metro Man's powers, and would have either become a hero or villain depending on where they wanted to take the story. But in the end, they opted to have Hal be the one infused and have a rather different take on the superhero origin story instead. So, like I just said, the idea presented isn't a bad one, but the thing is, whoever wrote that is kind of missing the entire point of the movie. Because, first of all, Megamind is famous for being one of the most subversive animated movies ever made, and they're saying it's cliché just because the villain becomes the hero instead of the damsel becoming the hero and the villain becoming the damsel? Because sure, it's not the first movie ever to depict the villain becoming the hero, but it honestly tells that story really well, having much more depth and subtlety to it than most other movies of its nature. And as I said in my video on Pixar's problem with endings, which you can find a link in the description to, sometimes it's not about predicting how a movie is going to end, but about how it gets to that ending that makes a movie great. And this movie does a really good job at that. Because even though most people can guess that Megamind is going to become the hero, most would never be able to guess how he ends up becoming one. So the simple fact that he starts out as a villain and becomes a hero doesn't automatically make it cliché. If Metro Man had turned evil and Roxanne fell in love with Megamind after seeing the fallen hero's true colors, then maybe I'd see what this person is talking about. But the actual movie takes a much more well-written and unpredictable approach. To put it simply, there is a reason this movie is considered so subversive. So trying to label it cliché simply based on its premise alone is honestly a really ignorant assessment of it. But the other problem with that quote, besides the obvious question of how both Roxanne and Hal could end up infused with powers, but I'm not even going to try to get into that, however, is that it completely misses the point of what the movie is trying to be. Because once again, I'll admit that idea could be a very interesting one, but it's not the story the writers want to tell. Megamind isn't about Roxanne being a bored damsel in distress, getting superpowers, beating up her creepy co-worker, and saving the man who constantly captured her. This movie is about Megamind, a good man who believes he's destined to play the role of a supervillain until circumstances allow him to see that he could be so much more than that. Though if you think the other premise would have been a better one for a movie, you're absolutely free to believe that. But the point is that the writers always intended it to be about Megamind becoming the good guy. And honestly, that's what some people forget about this movie. At the end of the day, it's Megamind's story, not anybody else's. Roxanne, Metro Man, Minion, and even Hal Stewart slash Titan, they are all secondary characters in Megamind's story. Sure, 
Most of them play important parts in that story, don't get me wrong, but that doesn't change the fact that when all said and done, the story is meant to be about him, and always was. So if Roxanne became the hero, and Megamind became a damsel in distress, then it wouldn't really be his story anymore, would it? And once again, I think that's what a lot of people don't realize here. The movie is called Megamind, not Roxanne. If it were, then maybe I'd see their point. But it's clearly meant to be about him. But the way some people talk, you'd think that Roxanne Ritchie was the most perfect, awesome character in the world. The paragon that all people should try to live up to. And listen, Roxanne is good and all, but I hate to say it, she's just an ordinary person. Maybe one that can see the true value of virtues and the good in people better than most others, but the point is... She's not some outstanding, game-changing character here. And I think she'd actually be the first person to argue against that assessment of her. She's simply your average person trying to do all the good she can in the world. And in the end, she does more than she ever thought possible by helping Megamind become a hero. My point is, just because she doesn't physically become a hero doesn't mean she didn't save Megamind. It was just in a different sort of way. And while she definitely deserves credit for that, I just think that people put her up on this pedestal as some great, wonderful character when that's not really what she's meant to be. So, to put it simply, I think the characters were better off playing the roles that they do in Megamind, particularly in reference to that quote mentioned before. Because as I just got through explaining, this movie is about Megamind. It's clearly his story. The writers aren't in any way trying to hide that. So if Roxanne were to become the hero and him a damsel in distress, not only would that go completely against what the movie was supposed to be, but I also think people would have been pretty mad. Because as a lot of early 2020s superhero movies have proved many times over, people kind of don't like it when the title implies one character is going to be the center of attention, only for other characters to hijack the narrative, and in the end, said title character plays little part in helping to win the day. But then again, if Megamind had gone the aforementioned route, it probably would have been even more ahead of its time, just not in a good way. The point is, Megamind is supposed to be the main character, and the movie smartly lets it be his story, and have him be the one to become the hero and save the day. Because again, that premise is interesting and all, but it just doesn't fit the kind of story this movie was trying to tell. Okay, I think that's everything I had to say on that. So now I'd like to hear your thoughts. Do you believe that Megamind is perfect just the way it is? Or do you believe it could have been better if it had taken an even more subversive approach like the one that quote presented? Please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And like I said before, you do not have to agree with me on anything I said in this video if you don't want to. You are entitled to your own opinion and can believe anything that you want to. And thank you all for watching. I totally appreciate it. And I hope to see you all next time.